my current knowledge of animation is probably, in, in terms of like knowing how it works, is zero. All I probably know is from when I was a little kid watching sort of morph and sort of stop frame animation on TV and watching cartoons. Um, I can see how it could be used in, in a history lesson. In my mind, I can imagine it, how it would be used. But as for actually using it, no. Will Rennie is the head of history at Hatch End High School in North London. He's been teaching for 18 years. Will has never made an animation, but would like to know more. So we've challenged him to find out as much as he can about using this technology and to transfer the skills he picks up into his own classroom. Following his progress through the challenge, you'll find out, among other things, how animation can encourage in-depth analysis, the equipment needed to create an animation, and how to add sound to an animation. If you want to give it a go yourself, there's a range of useful videos and support materials on the page for this programme on the Teachers TV website. So Will's travelled to Peterborough to meet Emily Blissett, the Head of Art at the Thomas Deakin Academy. Today Emily is teaching a cross-curricular art and literacy lesson. Her Year 7s are working on an animation based on a poem called Prince Kano. Did you do this storyboard yourself? Um, yeah, we made it as a group. It's basically a plan of what's going to be in the film. So you worked out you needed Prince Kano and you yeah. needed the charcoal burner. Yeah, we thought we'd make the storyboard and plan first and then, based off that, make the characters. Right. We, we get them to do a storyboard, um, particularly for this project, because we were trying to make them focus on literacy and it really makes them focus on the words and picking out the important events, really. Yeah. So I can imagine that would be really good for history. And already you can see, you know, they're going to know this, 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 this poem inside out by the end. Well, they have to look at so many of the details in it. That's the thing, um, is that you might read it and not notice this kind of yellow light, for example, but when you have to put it into action, you've got to create the yellow light, so it really makes you focus in on the details. There's a range of animation software available to buy, and Emily has chosen to use I Can Animate with her students. So what are you doing now? Um, I'm me? making my, per my Prince Kano run into the centre, and then he's going to look at the camera, scratch his head, and then I'm going to make him run forward, but he's not actually going to be running. He's going to be running on the spot, and I'm just going to make the trees move so it looks yeah, like yeah, he's yeah. running. Did you do animation before? Um, yeah, I tried to at home, but I never had the right equipment. Did you use wire in, um, to make your model? No, I didn't use wire in mine because uh, I kind of find it harder to move them. The wires to keep them upright and to keep them sturdy, but if you make them fat, the plasticine supports itself. OK, girls. Hello. Hi. Yeah. What verse are you doing? We're doing the first one. So far, it's seven seconds and 13 milliseconds. And how long has that take, taken you to get seven seconds? Um, about oh. seven minutes. Seven minutes? That's not bad. So someone like me is not very artistic. Do you think I could make it, or do you have to be good at art? No, no, really. no, no. I mean, look at the size of his eyes. Yeah. That doesn't exactly illustrate good art ability. <laughs> Here's a question. If you play it and there's a bit you don't like, like if it sort of pauses on Prince Kano too long, can you just, just take a frame out yeah. and just sort yeah, of like just, delete it? Yeah. You yeah. choose the yeah. frame and then you press delete. Right. Can you imagine doing this in like a history class or a geography class or yeah. English or that something? That would be really awesome. Yeah. You think that'd be fun? Yeah. yeah. So what are you doing in history at the moment? Can you remember? Um, in year I'm seven? doing about the um, medieval times and like at the moment we're trying to find out why Elizabeth the First doesn't marry and what reason why she should and who she should. So you could animate Elizabeth the First sort of not getting married? Like or... going, hmm, which one should I marry? That's a good <laughs> idea, going... that's a very good idea. You'll give me all the ideas from my class now. Emily has a few tips for Will on how to start an animation. If you'd like to know how to create steady stop frame animation and are watching this on the Teachers TV website, look below for a short how-to video. And can you move the camera? I mean, I saw some of the kids doing that for, like, close-ups and yeah, things. Yeah, you can do if that's what you want. Um, mm. it, there's nothing worse than moving your camera if you don't want that to happen. But if you do want to zoom in on things, you can do it gradually, so you can move the camera. But it's always a good idea to have a mark where it started off, so you can move it back to where, it, where you wanted it to be. So, if I'm on a budget, how much, Emily, do you think it's going to cost? These webcams are about £60 each, but they are quite posh ones, and they're especially for the Macs. 
if you're using PCs, which you are, you mm. can get them for five pounds, um, and you know you can you can bulk buy them and things like that. So you can get them fairly cheaply, and that's really the most expensive thing. So you just need one webcam yeah. per little group and that's yeah. all they need. So yeah. here you've only got like with one, six, two, three, two, about six, yeah. six groups. Yeah. 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 The plasticine you can get from um, teaching catalogue resources. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you can get a box, I think it's 20 quid for a starter pack. And these obviously, they're just going in the bin anyway, yeah, so we save, yeah, them, yeah, yeah. save them from the bin. Having seen the animations in action, Will wants to have a go himself. So he prints out a 2D figure to experiment with. So I've done four of them, so now I can make him talk. So I'm assuming if I just go like that. The box is moving. Or oh, I'll move the box. Oh, I've moved. The camera. <laughs> <laughs> the camera's moved now. It's just going to muck it all up, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so let's do it again. OK. With this time, me not moving the camera or the box and being much more careful. OK, okay so we'll try it again. Okay. So there he is. Okay, okay so let's try again. Just so hold out and then press the button. That's it. So can I play that? Oh, there we go. <laughs> Animations can include sound effects and narration. There's a how-to video on adding sound to an animation for those of you watching on the Teachers TV website. Stood a charcoal burner wearing a black hood. Once you've got your frames taken, if you share it, you can now open that little clip in iMovie. And once you've got it there, you can do all sorts to it. So um, things like sound effects, you could add, it's quite nice ambient cricket sound here, so that when I play this now, You've got some crickets in the background. Once complete, the students watch and evaluate the animations. <laughs> Excellent. Wow, what do people think of that one? The sound effects in it were chosen quite thought out quite well yeah. and uh, to add to a comedic slash horror effect. Yeah. yeah, well put. Yeah, I think that's really, really good. Yeah. What about the animation? The way he animated it? Um, the tree sort of moving along I thought was quite clever. It's very clever, isn't it? Emily, what would you say is the real, uh, the real benefits for your students in doing animation? Well, there's so much. I mean, apart from the obvious kind of, um, you know, if you were to do it in history, learning the facts and things like that, um, there's so many other skills involved. Um, working as a team is, is really good. And then even the things like working out where the pauses are going to come, it kind of helps them to understand sentence structure and story structure as well. So there's loads of kind of literacy benefits to it as well. And just having the patience to sit down and do it, and then at the end they've got really got something that they can be proud of, and they've got a film mm. that they can share their friends mm. and they can email to themselves. Oh, I agree, that's like nice. That. Yeah. Yeah. Will's now got just one week to devise a lesson plan for his own Year 9 pupils using animation in the classroom. I think when you start using computers, there's always an element of worry. Um, but I've had a little go today, and I've seen the kids Year 7s do it, so I'm pretty sure that once I've got my head around it, then, then things should go OK. It's a week later, and we're back at Hatch End High School. How has Will got on? Well, firstly, I really had to think of a topic. What they're going to try and do is, is go back to a piece of work they did at the very beginning of Year 9, so very much it's like a bit of a revision for them, and they study the story of Germany after the First World War and the story of how the Nazis took power. And I thought this would lend itself to like the chronological sort of storyboards, telling a story approach, which I, I guess you can use animation for. I think the software's really easy. I mean, I've never animated before. It took me 15, 20 minutes to get used to it, and that's it. Once you know how webcams work, once you know how to plug a microphone in, that's it. I mean, really, it's, it's like, you know, it's child's play. Will has taught one lesson showing his Year 9 students how to use the software and equipment. And now they're going to begin making their own animations. If you're watching this on the Teachers TV website and would like to see Will's lesson plan, look below. Will has divided the topic into chronological sections and given each group a different part to animate. 
At the end of the project, Will can join all the short animations together to make a film illustrating Hitler's rise to power. Okay, so we were given part three of the story that we're supposed to um, animate. And it's where communists are blamed for burning down the German parliament. And then this one guy called Marius van der Lue was at the scene. And so he's been jailed, and that's what we've got so far in our animation. They just wanted to basically um, target the communists to show that communism should be banned, so that's what they were trying to portray with um, putting him in jail. And that also set an example to other communists that not to go out um, spreading their messages, otherwise the same would happen to them. So, Ajivan, tell me, what's, what background do you, have you got here then? What's this background? We've got the golden coins on the wet scale. When's this? What's it's it called? The golden years. The golden years. So, how, so, what are you going to actually sort of animate? We're going to animate like background. two people dancing, enjoying their time, having champagne, dancing. Yeah. Represents happiness and they're rich. Come on. Okay. So, I think in terms of the animation, the creativity, I think the kids have done really well. And some of the examples I've been really impressed with, actually. And in terms of like helping to reinforce their understanding of Hitler's rise to power and, and Germany after the First World War, I think it's definitely helped. It's made them think about it for quite a long time. It's not often that in a history class that the kids will sit down and work for, what, two hours and just get on with it themselves. I mean, I could take a back seat and actually it gives me a chance to get around the class and actually point out some historical mistakes they've made and how to make their work more accurate as well. I wouldn't use that as the backdrop. To be to strictly accurate, that looks Auschwitz. And that's really from World War II. So what I think you need to do for a more accurate backdrop is look at a concentration camp like Dachau, which has been built in Germany in the 1930s. And I think that will give you a more accurate background rather than just using that one. This was the wrong one for where the communists were sent, so we, this is the one that they actually went to. Um, so you get the facts right. Yeah, we want to get the facts right, so I had to change it to this one. We had never done that before, the plasticine animation before. And when we tried it first time, it was quite, it looked hard when we saw the animation from different people. And when we tried it ourselves, we found it quite easier to do. We used the webcam, we used the mics, and that was basically it. Filming was clicking a button to take the, each shot, so that seemed pretty simple. If you made a mistake, you could delete that just that part, not having to delete the whole thing, so it kind of would flow through more easily. You only have to put the key events. You can't go with all the details as the movie becomes too long. And it helps if you're like a really visual learner, and it helps you to learn it more well. Yeah, we definitely yeah. enjoyed it more. It's more practical work, and when you do practical, things stick to your mind and you won't forget it. I thought it went very well, actually. I think it's improving ICT skills. I think it's improving their sort of creative skills. In terms of their historical skills, it's making them think about things in more detail. It's making them think of how one event actually links on to the next and causes the next events. It's making them think of the whole sort of story and selecting the key issues that they need to illustrate. I think the most important thing is the kids are enjoying it. And I think it's too often that, that history can be viewed as a subject that's not very creative. It's actually making history fun. If you're watching this on the Teachers TV website and are interested to see how teachers of different key stages and subjects use animation, then have a look at the Better Learning with ICT case studies below.